and welcome back for part two of the programme. We thought we would bring you here to the grandeur and magnificence of Vienna. No longer an imperial capital, but still, of course, very much the capital of Austria. Now, this is a country that is one of the European Union's wealthier member states. It's been a member since 1995 and was a founding member of the Euro currency. Austrians are going to be going to the polls themselves on October 15th to elect a new parliament. Now, just last year, another election here made headlines all around the world. That's because a candidate from the far right came in second behind the Greens-backed independent Alexander van der Bellen on a split of 54 to 46 percent. Well, this time around, it's a candidate from the centre-right who's predicted to become the next Chancellor at age just 31. He is somewhat of a political novice. He's also accused by some of borrowing rather heavily himself from the far right. His name is just about everywhere at the moment. So who is Sebastian Kurz? Our reporter Luke Brown has been to find out more. Sebastian Kurz is a politician in a hurry. At 31 years of age, he's on course to become the next Chancellor of Austria. His youth and energy, as well as a lot of handshakes, are proving to be vote winners, as is his promise to defend Austrian sovereignty. We should decide ourselves who can immigrate and not leave it up to the people smugglers. I have always been against an unlimited welcome for immigrants in Europe, and I remain on that line. I am happy that at a European level, many people are changing their opinion on this question and are following our position. As he presses the flesh in Salzburg, Kurtz turns on the charm for potential voters. His personal popularity has propelled the Austrian People's Party, the OVP, to the top of the polls. His inexperience outweighed by voters' desire to shake up Austria's creaking political system. At least he is a breath of fresh air for the OVP. And we need someone who doesn't come from the party machine. Sebastian Kurz's ambitions have been clear for some time. Less than a decade ago, he headed up the party's youth wing. And he became Europe's youngest foreign minister at just 26. Earlier this year, he seized the leadership of the People's Party. And while he may have shaken up Austrian politics, comparisons with France's president, Emmanuel Macron, are misleading. Sebastian Kurz is at odds with European moderates on issues like migration. He was a vocal critic of Angela Merkel's welcome to refugees in 2015. Now, for many political observers, he is actively wooing voters of Austria's far-right Freedom Party, the FPO. What Sebastian Kurz and the People's Party are trying to achieve is getting a bunch of the voters who are skeptical about immigration and diversity. Sebastian Kurz definitely took some of the agenda of the Freedom Party. He's presenting it in a more moderate tone, uh, but there are strong similarities. Having shaken up his own party, Sebastian Kurz may want to go further and break a taboo in Austrian politics, enter a coalition with the far-right Freedom Party. 17 years ago, the FPO's only experience in government prompted EU sanctions. But its hardline stance on immigration policies have influenced the debate this year. Now the FPO's leader, Hans-Christian Stracker, insists his rival is borrowing policies from the far right. It's nice that now, just before the election, it would seem he's now become a fan of mine. There's no other way of describing it. He is, after all, now trying to copy my themes. But people go to the original and not the cheap copy, because they know he caused the damage and has no credibility. The far-right party has campaigned on other populist issues like wealth inequality and combating smoking bans. But at heart, its message remains profoundly xenophobic and anti-Muslim. No Islam is not part of Austria, my dear friends. We want to prevent this Islamization of Austria, and we will achieve that. Back in Salzburg, Kurz works the crowd with seemingly boundless energy. 
Polls indicate voters back his ideas and aren't turned off by a coalition with the Freedom Party. His priority echoes that of the far right, ensuring Austria's way of life is not threatened by newcomers. We need to stop more and more immigrants from using our welfare state. And a welfare state like we have in Austria can only function if there are enough people who pay into it and there aren't too many people profiting from it. Sebastian Kurz has overhauled his party. To govern, though, he may be forced to enter a coalition with the far right, a move which could put Austria on a collision course with the European Union once again. Well, our expert guide to Austrian politics here at the Austrian Parliament building is MEP Evelyn Regner. Very nice to Hi, meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Uh, you're from the Social Democratic Party, which yes. is currently in coalition with Mr Kurz's People's Party. However, according to the polls, the Social Democrats have fallen out of favour somewhat with the voters. What's your take? It's the classic hype situation. You have some... when somebody new shows up. So... Uh, the con Conservatives have a new party leader. Mm -hmm. So, and that's exactly the same situation you see in so many countries. You saw it in France with Macron coming. And that's the same situation in Austria. And therefore, I hope very much that this hype more or less is fading away and the situation changes and the people's vision is not blurred anymore, but far, far more clear. We're just looking at Austrian politics a bit more broadly. I think we can say that it's in quite an interesting place at the moment. We've got yes. Mr Kurz's People's Party centre-right, but really moving quite far along to the right of the political spectrum. At the same time, an independent president uh, with backing from the Greens, who's calling on voters to think about Europe when they go to the polls. What do you think is going on? I wished our president uh, would be a little bit more present uh, right now in the uh, political debate. Of course, not interfering with the elections, it's clear, but somehow giving a message on the good values uh, we are standing for as Democrats in Europe and in Austria. He proved himself that standing for Europe, standing for democracy, standing for a social Europe, these are values, positive values, people would take into consideration when going to the polls. OK, well, it certainly is an interesting situation, as we've said. And I think we're better to go and find out a little bit more about what voters think about it than perhaps a traditional Austrian cafe. With pleasure. I okay. like that. <laughs> Let's go. We can have some coffee and some cake. Yes. <laughs> What I'm scared of after the elections is that if, for example, the right-wing party would win, um, the European Human Rights Convention that was signed in the 1950s um, might be revoked from the right-extreme party. And that would have a big impact on Austria and on the people that living in Austria. And it would have an impact on the rest of the European Union as well as Europe itself. When we look at the extreme right, we are living in Austria already with this party for so many years. We had them in government. Mm -hmm. It seems somehow people got used to it, but nevertheless, it's a party uh, that is deeply anti-democratic, deeply anti-European. Yep. I was not born in Austria. I came here with six years from Serbia and uh, got the citizenship uh, when I was 16 years old. Every couple of years I have to go to to the embassy and uh, to get a new visa. Mm. And every time that I did, I feel like I'm not an Austrian. And uh, I like the you that, um, that um, they, uh, they open the borders and you can live in every place in the EU that you want. And uh, when I see um, in other countries where the far right party so, um, has won, yeah. And that's a very dangerous thing, a very dangerous situation. When you look at, at Hungary or when you look at Poland, for example, for example. or when you look at... Yeah. For me, um, it's very important to keep the um, neutrality of Austria mm -hmm. in, in Europe, because I think that Austria has the chance to um, play a big role in the peacekeeping process in Europe. You have to 
prepare or explain to the people who live in your country that hey the international work together the, the connections the traveling whatever it is or studying abroad or whatever it is it's only a plus it can like in my opinion it's only positive to get to know other cultures and if you close that the borders, um, the borders you can't go internationally the Austrians have to understand how important the EU is they have no no European feeling they don't see each other as a European family yeah that's something we have to learn all together As you can see, we've left the historic heart of Vienna and we have come to a neighbourhood called Alta Donau. Tell us about this neighbourhood. <laughs> it's just a mixture, a mixture of, first of all, international flair. We have the United Nations headquarter in Vienna. You have social housing everywhere. So middle class, everybody is living in social housing. So you're really there where Viennese people live. So it's quite typical. Okay, excellent to come here. Well, as you mentioned the United Nations, uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that the United mm -hmm. Nations uh, Refugee Agency has yes. had some words to say about the election recently. Uh, they said that they're seeing xenophobic debates going on in Austria. Now, uh, the issue of migration has been a huge theme here. We had more than 80,000 people arrive in Austria mm -hmm. in the year 2015. Uh, it is a legitimate concern for many Austrians. Mm -hmm. That's 1% of the population. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, is it being used as a political football? Austria really did its homework and uh, doing everything in order to offer integration for refugees arriving here. What happened afterwards is that far-right parties like uh, FPÖ, but also ÖVP, moved more and more to the right using this fear of something they don't know. As long as they are playing with this fear, it's good for them. And so they use the topic of the migrants again and again. We know that uh, Sebastian Kurz wants to cut the amount of benefits that uh, migrants can receive uh, and also cap those benefits. There's a, a ban on full face veils, a, a so-called burqa ban, uh, and, and other laws that have come in to do regarding integration. Do you feel that these policies are going in the right direction? It's quite cheap to talk about the burka ban because there's really, a, I would say, a peanut topic. And then somehow you don't talk about the really important issues that touch people's lives, like education, school, what to do with them, uh, what to do with all those uh, young, about these kids that are arriving and have to be integrated at school. They really have to do something about kindergarten, about housing, how to finance that. And these are the real questions. And so somehow they try to talk about something that's not the real questions of life. Certainly are very big issues for many, many Austrian voters. Thank you so much for talking to us about them and all the other things that we've discussed uh, today on France 24. Every With nightmare. pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for your time. And while we're talking about integration, our reporter Luke Brown has been out around Austria to find out how these new measures are impacting on newcomers to this country. Freedom and solidarity, taxation and good neighbourliness. Learning the basics about Austrian society. For this class of Farsi speakers from Afghanistan and Iran, this lesson in integration will help them be part of their new homeland. I want to live here and I want to understand the laws and rules in Austria. This day-long class has a double objective, ensure newly arrived migrants understand their rights as well as their responsibilities. Since the migrant crisis of 2015, 31,000 people have taken the course. A fraction, though, of the total of 130,000 people who have applied for asylum in Austria in that period. That's why from October 1st, the integration class will become compulsory for new arrivals. It shouldn't be coincidence whether people integrate in this country or not. People who are, going, who are here and who are going to be here in the long run, we should make sure that they're integrating as quickly as possible. The newly compulsory course is part of the new integration law. The authorities will also require asylum seekers to perform community service to prepare for the jobs market, and the full face veil will also be banned. In Vienna's multicultural Brunnenmarkt district, many find the new laws are acceptable. We are just guests here, if you see what I mean. And if some people don't like that, 
well, they should stay where they come from. The law is the brainchild of Sebastian Kurz, the current foreign minister and likely next chancellor. Migration has been a major issue in this year's election, benefiting the populist and xenophobic party, the FBO. Critics say the new law stigmatizes migrants. Kurz is using the, the issue of migration because he does not want that uh, FPÖ uh, gains more voters uh, because they um, are against foreigners and refugees. I'm sure that he tries to get FPÖ voters by um, um, pronouncing a politic of xenophobia. With its calls to defend traditional Austrian values, the law does appeal to voters on the far right of the political spectrum. And for the vice president of the far right FPO, Norbert Hofer, integration must come second to defending Austria's national identity. We now have approximately 700,000 Muslims in the country. For such a small country, so fashioned by Christianity, that is a big challenge. We are prepared to help and do a lot, but it must be within the parameters of allowing one's own identity to survive. Norbert Hofer was narrowly defeated in last year's presidential election. Now his far-right party is riding high in the polls and could enter a governing coalition, meaning the issues his party holds dear and its hard line on immigration are likely to remain in the spotlight. So there you have it, integration, immigration, such hot topics for so many European countries at the moment, but sure to be key themes for that upcoming election here in Austria. Don't forget, you will be able to follow full coverage of the Austrian election on France 24 on October the 15th. For now, that's it from us and this Viennese world through the European Union's two German-speaking countries. Thanks very much for being with us and see you next time for our next edition of Europe Now.